Hi everyone, this is Penguin Trades, and this is a review for the ES and NQ futures for August 28th. So starting off, we're going to go over the ES here, and then we'll flip over to the NQ. This is our overnight high up here, and this is our overnight low down here. These are our key levels for the day. I started trading at 8 central time, which is this area right here. Now notice that we have, after this push up here, when we start pushing lower, that of course forms our overnight high swing. So we are pushing off the overnight high, going towards the low. So the overnight high and low... They act like a range. When you come off one side, you can expect price to attempt to reach the other side. And so when we get a leg down like this and then a break, we want to look to get in on the second leg down. Now, when we get this break right here, we don't get a short right away. You know, we just get this first entry up, lower high on the opposite side of the count. We want to see a good reversal pattern. And you see with this uptrend right here, this whole downtrend is the break from that uptrend. So you have to view it as uptrend break and then first attempt at a new high and you don't want to try to get short on a first attempt at a new high you want to get in on the second attempt that's where you look for the failure and so this right here has confluence between this downtrend and this uptrend right here because this entry is the second attempt at a new low for the downtrend so downtrend break first attempt lower second attempt lower so you're getting in on that second attempt lower for the downtrend but at the same time the uptrend already has two measured legs up attempting to make a new high. So uptrend, break, first attempt higher, second attempt higher, and then you're entering on the failure, okay? So it has confluence between the downtrend and the uptrend, and then considering the fact that when you come off one side of a range or the overnight levels, you can expect price to reach the other side. So everything is pointing towards going short right here. So I like this trade a lot right here. We push on lower here. We nearly reach that measured move within a couple ticks of it before pushing higher here. And so as we push up here, we start to get a second leg down that looks pretty similar to this first leg. So what this is here is at first you had this first attempt lower and then this second attempt lower. But since this is clearly taking off, forming its own two-legged move from this high, the way that you have to view it now is this is a two-legged break from this downtrend. So downtrend, and then this is a two-legged break before you get the two attempts at a new low. So this is just price action getting bigger picture in real time. Um, you just got to learn how to see it in real time like that. And so, um, you know, and I understand how that can be confusing, but really, you had your first attempt lower, second attempt lower, and on that second attempt lower, you know, it's clearly launching a whole another two-legged move down. So this really is just a two-legged break, considering that it's a double bottom. It's not like the swing pushed lower and already made a new low, in which case it would not be able to be considered a two-legged break. Um, but anyway, let's continue on here. So the downtrend has a break, two clear legs to a new low. It's clearly forming some kind of resistance. At first, this range was right here. Um, you know, in this area, I don't mind pushing it a few ticks through. The context overall was extremely, you know, bearish, looking for a short. Um, so push it out a little tiny bit here. It, pushed out so this is a break of this range and then price started fading back in and then after one fade after one breakout and then fade you don't want to immediately extend the trend line but if you get two breakouts that easily could just mean that the trend or excuse me the range is expanding and then widening and so that's why i extended it to there after that second swing right there and so we push on up here after that second leg down it doesn't reach the overnight low it doesn't reach the measured move but it does start reversing higher and then that's when this slant becomes clear it's fitting off these lows this blue channel here it's fitting off the highs right there and ultimately it's you know we just don't reach the other side we don't get two clear legs up to get a short we just get this one leg up and then it gets choppy above the ema Nothing good for a short there. So anyway, we push on lower here. We get a couple legs down. We reach the overnight low. We reach that you know previous measured move level. And then price has a pretty good spike up there. It doesn't last long. It does find resistance right at that trend line again. But you know it does show that this is an important level. But you know there's just too much of an imbalance in this overall range right here. The, you have the high and the low. If price is unable to get back to one side, like we push off the high and then we can't get back above, that's what's called a, a bearish imbalance, uh, you know, because the bears are winning out within this overall range. It's unable to get back up. And so anyway, at this point here, you know, we have the second leg up. So first leg up, kind of chopped around a bit. We got this little two-legged correction and then a second leg up. So it's very important to understand two-legged moves. You can see that this is clearly a two-legged move. These legs are connected, and they just so happen to be separated by a clear two-legged move before pushing back up. So it's just important to understand second entries and how they work. 
we came off of a key entry point right here, the overnight low, and so that pushed us into this launch. And then we found resistance from this trend line, which is not as strong as you know this right here. This is a major key level. This is a you know this is just a regular key entry point. And so this wasn't enough to completely reverse it, but it was enough to offer a two-legged correction before getting a second leg that managed to push through it. So it's just important to understand the different key entry points and their their strengths and how some are stronger than others and you know what you can expect when price comes off of them so anyway at this point here we break this channel and then it does start to push back below right away um, now it did get a little bit choppy right here and the, the reason I don't like this lower high is because we just had such a bullish push right after not that it triggers it does end up invalidating with this next bar by not triggering and then closing back above but even if I, I I wasn't wanting to enter right there anyway on this bar. I wasn't trying to get in below that. Um, you know, it just got a little bit choppy. We pushed off this low again off of, you know, support, which is not good for going into a short right after, and it just had such a bullish bar. So I wasn't interested in going short right there. But anyway, it does push on lower here. Now, notice this wider channel. It doesn't really, you know, it only has those two off the high and then off the low here. It has a couple, you know, those two swings there, but then it really doesn't hold again. You have this tiny bounce there, but then it's already overshooting. Overshoots tend to lead to breaks or at least, you know, spikes in the opposite direction attempting to break. In this case here, we just got these two small legs up. Now, by the time you get this bearish bar here, I don't like entering because you're entering right into this low right here. Now, when you are in a downtrend and you overshoot it's very common to get a reversal and it's very and you know you can look to get long to go the opposite way and so what could happen is we push up here push back through the overnight hot the overnight low and then we look to get in on a big failed second entry after it gets above the overnight high and if we push up here and break we have to consider a couple attempts at a new low for this channel right here um, but that doesn't happen I was just going over a possibility of what I like to see there but instead we just got two attempts up these are the two attempts to fade as well because when you break out of an overnight level you don't want to just immediately short the breakout like you don't want to go short here just because you're getting a red bar pushing out of the overnight low you know it, it could easily just fade back in and at this point here we do have those two fade attempts we just don't get a clear entry to get along with the breakout so anyway we push on lower here as we get these couple legs down, you know, price attempts to reverse and then it pushes down at the EMA, no entry on the way down. Basically what you have here is a downtrend, a break, and then a new low, and then a reversal attempt. So this is a good place to get a reversal higher there. But it holds down by the EMA and also the retest of this trend line. And so when it pushes lower there, that's when it's much clearer that we're going into a wider channel from here. So this overshoot from this trend turned into its own trend, literally. And so we have this downtrend, nothing on the way down. After we push lower, we get this first entry, not off the EMA, and then another one, not off the EMA. And it starts to go sideways, and then this entry is right into that very clear support. You don't want to take that. And then here, we get a clear two-legged break from this downtrend. So downtrend, two legs back, off these highs right here, it fades back down. As you can see, this is, you can see right there, limit order. If you had tried to enter with a stop all the way below this bar here, then you would have to push it pretty significantly out of this range. I don't mind pushing it a few ticks out, a couple ticks out. You know, as long you, I kind of adjust how much I'm willing to push it out depending on the context. In this case here, the context is obviously very bearish. I don't mind pushing it out a couple ticks. Um, but then in other contexts, I don't mind pushing it out more. And, you know, I don't have a bunch of examples here because I'm just going over this one day, but the point is, if you have good context, don't be afraid of pushing it out of a channel a couple ticks, or excuse me, a range, not a channel. Um, so that's why I like this right here. Two legs back, two-legged break from this downtrend. When a downtrend gets a break, you can expect prices to attempt a new low. You got those two legs up to one side of this range, and again, range rules. When you come off one side, you can expect price to reach the other side, and we got a very bearish reaction to that. So that's why I like that so much right there. We push on lower here. This downtrend is now considered played out because it has a break and a new low. So when a trend makes a new extreme after a break, it's considered played out. And then that is a very common place to get a reversal pattern at. Rush back above, a couple legs back, making a failed second entry would be most ideal in this area here. At the moment, we only have this one push up and one leg back. And so we'll see what happens. You know, it could push into a failed second entry. This leg is looking a bit big for what I'd like, but 
you know, it could still form something from that, um, you know, first entry short, second entry short, and then even if it doesn't offer a long down here, what it could do is push up and then form a smaller failed second entry that stems from right here. And then you would just use the measured move. Like if you got a failed second entry that stems from here, you could ride that to the measured move. You see what I'm saying? And you just don't want to push your target past it. So anyway, that's going to do it for this part of the video. I'm going to hop over to the NQ now. Um, so yeah, let's just click on that. So here's the NQ. Again, overnight high here, overnight low down here. These are our key levels. I started trading at 8 central time around this area here. And we get this little downtrend, overshoot leads to a break, pushes down to a new low. And so this downtrend is considered played out at this point. Now you have to look at this uptrend too. So uptrend, break, first attempt higher, and this is the second attempt higher. It has this new low right here. And oftentimes with a new low, since it's all part of this downtrend, downtrend, break, new low, it, you know, you reset the count at a new high. And so it could be viewed as uptrend, break so this whole thing is the break downtrend with its break and a new low because that is all part of the same trend this downtrend playing out with the break to a new low and so then it, you'll often get two legs from there sometimes um because this this can confuse people i know that people have asked about this when an uptrend gets a break and you get your first attempt higher can the second attempt higher start from below the swing of the first attempt higher usually it will just, you know, oftentimes if it's very close, it'll just count as a double bottom and it will count as that second attempt higher. And you just have to trade based on how price reacts to it. Like after the second attempt higher occurs, if you're expecting a failure, if price reacts like a failure rushing below, then you have to stick with what price is doing. But in this case here, it really, you know, it's more significant. It's not just a double bottom. It really just looks like this downtrend playing out. And then I would want to look for another leg up from here. So first leg up and then look for a second leg up um that's what i would be looking for here it just this is all part of the same break so i hope that's clear right there you know it, it can be confusing sometimes whenever it's borderline a double bottom which in this case it's not borderline but if it is borderline sometimes then people don't know whether it should be counted as a count reset or not you just have to wait to see how price reacts after it takes off that's really the only way if, if you're not sure so anyway, we push on down here. We don't get that second leg up. You know, great place to push back above and look for a higher low, but it just doesn't happen here. So we continue on lower here. We're making a second leg down because this right here, we have this in play. So first leg down, break, second leg down. We can look for a short on the way down to the overnight low right here, but we don't get anything clear. You know, we as we start this second leg, if we got a couple legs back, making a failed second entry from here, then we absolutely could have gotten a short, but we just got this lower high. It doesn't even have a good signal bar, so there's just nothing to take there. So anyway, we push on lower here. We go into this downtrend. These highs are fitting well. These lows are fitting well. We're clearly pushing out of the overnight low at this point, so we can expect price to attempt to fade back up. And right here, that's what price starts doing. But just because we get this retest right here doesn't mean that we can immediately go short. After this breakout, we only have one clear attempt to fade. It's all within this trend right here. It's not two clear separated legs, so I don't like going short there. Also, it's still within the, right, the trend anyway, so um, you know, you're entering right into that. So nothing there. It does go into this clear two-legged move down, though. We start pushing back up. You can see right here there's a failed second entry. So first entry short, second entry short failure. The reason I don't like it, it's not just because it's so choppy right here, it's that combined with the fact that this downtrend just got a break and could easily push to a new low. Um, so considering that price was struggling to push up here and it was just going sideways, I was not very confident on this, you know, reversal pattern working right here. But it does end up working. We push on higher here. And now we get this right here. Notice price fades back in. And then notice here, after we break back out, there isn't two attempts to fade again. Now, this right here, since we had a significant breakout and we did barely push back in, but just barely before pushing back out, this could easily just be viewed as a retest from the overnight low right here. At for, you, know, you can see there's a couple legs right there, and it there's a sorry, there's a couple legs up within this right here, but really it is just one leg on a bigger picture. Um, the way that I view it is this downtrend, which I'm gonna remove these arrows because it's kind of getting confusing, but we have this downtrend right here, which ultimately there is a wider trend right here throughout this whole measured move, but this is where the clear channel is. 
we have a break and we can expect price to attempt a new low. So this downtrend is still in play and we're expecting price to attempt a new low. This right here, we're getting the third bounce. Was, I slightly adjusted it. Let me put it back to exactly where it was. So this trend line at the same time while we're expecting a new low is getting its third bounce and it's it did slightly fade in, but it's pushing right back out basically like a retest. So the way that I view this is it's a lower high while expecting a new low for this downtrend. We're fading this range right here, which let me push this back out. We have room to the other side of it. And ultimately, price is clearly rejecting the fade. It's just going along with this downtrend that's clearly holding. And then, you know, we're just continuing pushing down. And so that's why I like this trade right here. Good retest, even though this uptrend has a break, only has one clear attempt at a new high. I'm sticking with the bigger picture trend right here. So that's why I like that. We push on lower right here. Notice that we get this new trend, this, you know, downtrend. And so what we have is downtrend break and then this is clearly making the major first attempt at a new low and so since this measured move is still in play even though we've made a new low at this point if we get a couple of clear legs back we can look to continue short to reach the measured move because again these measured moves act as magnets and if the trend is already down with a magnet in play if you get two clear legs back with a good bearish reaction then you want to look to get short with the trend and so in this case here we don't get anything clear um, you know, you can see there's a leg there and then there's a small break with this red bar and then a second leg up but That is just too small picture considering it's just coming off of this low When you come off one side of a channel, you can expect price to attempt to reach the other side Even though channels have a bias, you know, it has a down bias, obviously um, You can still expect price to be bullish enough to reach the other side So when you don't get two clear legs, you can't be so sure that it's gonna work Especially when you just came off of this other side price could easily make a second leg up like this so it would it's just a dangerous trade to go short right there so anyway just too small picture we push on lower here we get a more significant overshoot and then this measured move gets met we get a very clear reaction to it but the resistance from this channel is strong enough to push it right back down preventing the reversal up now i just want to mention when we push up here Considering we just overshot this channel and overshoots tend to lead to breaks they lead to sharp spikes to the other side And we met this measured move right here This is a great place to get a failed second entry or a reversal pattern But you do need room to the other side of the channel since this uh, Swing pierced this channel you can look to extend it And so you just need room to the other side of the channel but you can get a failed second entry in this downtrend. It's not like it's a runaway downtrend day. You know, it's still close to the overnight high. It has easy capacity to fade. It's still in continue at this point. So, or at this point here, not right here necessarily, but still can get it from there. And then it just doesn't happen. So we push on lower here. It starts to get a little bit choppy. We start pushing on up. And then here we have two major legs up you can view this as two major attempts to fade because that's what it is and we got a very clear bearish reaction to that so it's looking like it's going to be you know more down from here but you can't say for sure it could push on up here that's just how it's looking at this moment and so as we push lower here what i'd like to see is a failed second entry that stems from right here Overall, we have two major legs up with a very clear bearish reaction around the area of this trend line. It's not perfect, obviously, it went pretty clearly through it, but it's not too far off. It's pushing back lower here. This channel could recover and we can extend the trend line to it, but this is a great place to get a push down, a couple clear legs back, making a failed second entry to continue with the overall downtrend right after reaching this major measured move right here. So. That's what I'd be looking for. It's clearly finding some resistance at this previous one right here. So it's a shame it didn't push a little bit further before getting a couple legs back so you can get a clear retest. So we'll see what happens. You know, obviously you've got to consider stuff like this too. You know, this uptrend here, it's not confirmed yet. It's, you got two off these lows here. These highs obviously are not consistent yet, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I wish it pushed down a little bit more so we could get something. But I'm probably just going to be done for the day. I might stick around for a bit, actually. Um, usually I'd just be done after the video, but I might trade for a bit longer. So, you know, uh, I'll be on the site. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Um, hope it helped out in some way, and thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.